Born in Quincy, Massachusetts in 1924, William Sathmary was known later in life by his showbiz name, Bill Dana, and the character he created in the early 50s. My name, I'll say my name. This bloodhound is my latest acquisition. That, that's, a, that's a bloodhound? Sure is. Looks like he lost a lot of blood. <laughs> okay, come on in and bring in the baby. Thank you. Years before his successful career as a comedy writer and performer, Bill Dana was a child of the Great Depression, and he's a veteran of World War II. Brokaw, Tom Brokaw talks about the greatest generation, and my take has always been the great full generation because World War II came along and, and, and got us out of the Depression. I remember the guy when we first went in, you had a choice of a C on your dog tags. You could have a C for Catholic, a P for Protestant, or an H that shows Hebrew instead of a J. And I remember the guy, the corporal or whatever it was, saying, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the Jewish kids are putting a P on there because if you get captured, you know, why, why ask for trouble? But, you know, I put an H on my dog tag, so. So I went overseas with Company A, 263rd Infantry of the 66th Division. And we went, we were stationed in the south of England, a place called Bridport. And then I was involved with a very historic point in America's military history. Very few people are aware of the Leopoldville disaster. And this was, I, I called myself a Cheshire cat because there was, there was a boat called the Cheshire and there's a boat called the Leopoldville. My outfit, which was the 263rd Infantry, went on the Cheshire. The 262nd and the 264th went on the Leopoldville, and the Leopoldville was sunk. Christmas Eve, 1944, almost a thousand guys killed. We were headed into the bulge. This disaster happened, and so guys like me who, who were, were left, instead of going there, my outfit ended up at St. Nazaire. It was just loaded with, uh, they had about 50,000 people who were trapped. And our job was to hold that. The 94th Division that we relieved, they sustained terrible damage. You know, our officers communicated with their officers. So it saved my ass. It li literally did at the expense a lot of uh, good guys. I've not heard General Eisenhower been given credit for making sure as many American GIs witnessed the, the Holocaust, saw those death camps, and we went to Dachau. And I will never, I wish I could forget it, I'll never, ever get the, the vision of seeing that out of my mind. Mail call, oh boy. I'm glad you brought that up because anybody who, who has a relative in the service, you gotta write, you gotta communicate because that is such a joy. And the flip side is if mail call is over and they haven't called your name, and because I was Zath Mary there, I always knew if I had a, if the corporal was saying, Sizi Zaga, I'd say, here. People need to remember most about World War II that it was genuine. You don't get more real in terms of an enemy that has a potential of doing you in. The pictures of the enemy were so beautifully clear. These were the people you you willing to squeeze off around or shove a bayonet in, oh, absolutely. It's funny to go through a war or a period that includes the greatest inhumanity to 
humans and have enough of it be such a wonderful nostalgia. So I've, uh, I've had a sense of very, very strong gratitude for having been in, in that war. You paid dues and then there were a lot of rewards. In World War II America, you were fighting and you were fighting a good war. We came back on a boat with the horns blasting and with, with the tugboats shooting off. The, we're back, we've saved the world for democracy.